how do you set up custom reports? And this is kind of a big topic, so I'm going to try to just give an overview because we could really go in depth in this. And there's actually um, a section on this in our training classes. But I'll try to give you an overview so that you can at least get started creating your own reports. The easiest way to start is to find one of our generic reports that kind of come built in with uh, um, Worksheet. So I'm just going to use the standard quote here. And I'm just going to apply this standard quote to any worksheet. Okay. So now I've got the standard quote here. Now this isn't the report that you want, but we want to edit this to make it our own special report. There's a couple ways. You can click this little uh, book with the kind of starburst icon on the corner. Or you can go to the Reports menu up here and click on Edit Report Design. Both of those should open up our Report Designer program, which is what's on the center of the screen right now. I'm going to maximize it to make it a little easier to work with. And now we're actually editing that report that we just applied to our worksheet. So the first thing you probably want to do is save out this report as a new name. So I'm just going to do File, Save As. Right now it's called Standard Quote. I'm going to call it. Um, I'm going to call it my standard quote. So I'm just going to put a my at the beginning of it, so I know it's mine. There we go. So now we have that saved out to a new name. That means if I mess this up or goof it up somehow, I can always go back to the other standard quote and start over. Uh, once I have that done, we just need to take a look at this. Um, there's not a whole lot of fields here or a whole lot of areas. Um, basically you have the top pull-down menu system up here, which gives you some functions in the report. You've got a toolbar that gives you, you know, starts off with your new report, open, and save buttons, and it has a couple other commands. Um, the thing you'll probably use this mo mostly for is the grouping. And these little toggles up here, which turn on and off different sections of the report, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the next big section you have here is the Field Explorer on the left-hand side of the screen. So you can see right now it's, uh, it's showing me the data fields, and it gives me the different uh, sections that are available in the report. And then the big section in the middle here is the actual work area for your report. This is, this is the template for your report. So what you're seeing over here is what's actually going to be printed on your page. should qualify that because <laughs> what you see, you see a lot of the fields have labels to them. So anything that's actually a value field, you'll see the value for that field. So for example, the ship to here, it's not going to say ship to name. It's actually going to have the name there, the person's name if you fill out that, that part of the data. Um, but this, this is how it's going to be laid out on the page when you go to print it. Um, so a couple real quick things that I'll show you how to do. One is you probably don't want to use our 2020 logo. You'd probably want to use one of your own. And it's really easy to change the logo. What you want to do is double click the image file where it says 2020. That brings us into the field properties window. And you can see right now it's, it's pointing to a logo file on my computer somewhere. If I wanted to change that, I would just click the three little dots over here and go find a picture which you know what, I don't think I have any saved on this computer, but you'd go find your logo file and select it. And the logo can be anything, a bitmap, JPEG, uh, PNG. Honestly, I find bitmaps seem to work better than JPEGs. So if you have your logo in a BMP or bitmap format, um, that's probably the way to go. Uh, but basically you select your file, click Open. Since I don't have one, I can't really switch it right now. but. Um, you should see the logo update to your own company logo once you do that. Another thing you can do is you can add your own fields to this report. Uh, so for example, if I want to add some custom text up here at the top, I've got kind of an empty space up here in the corner. Um, what I would do is I'd come over here. And the way you add a field is you want to click the field that you want to add. In this case, I'm going to reusable fields and text. I'm going to click it, 
and then just drag. And you'll see as I'm dragging it, I get the, the no symbol or the bar sinister, a little circle with the line through it. But once I get into the actual report area, then it kind of changes the cursor back to an arrow with a little square indicating that it's dragging something. And then I drop that field where I want it to go. I just let go of the mouse cursor. And I forgot that I've maxed out, or this report actually has the limit of text fields. You can only have 10 per section. And I forgot that this one has that limit. So what I'm going to do is just delete one of these fields. There we go. Now I'm bringing the text back over. So just repeating what I did there. And you see now when I drag it in, it gives me a rich text field. This is kind of a special field. What this rich text field allows me to do is I can type whatever text I want in here, and this will show up on the report exactly how I type it. So right now it starts out saying rich text field, just to let you know what type of field it is, but it's actually blank. So if I print this, it would be empty. So I just double-clicked it there to bring up the field properties window, and now I can, I can type whatever I ever want, if I can type. So you see that, and now that's what it says on the field. Um, you can change the font, you can change the size of the text and everything to make it look how you prefer it to look. Um, but that's the basics of adding a rich text field like that. Uh, another thing you might want to do is add um, a field to one of the sections in the lower parts of the report. So for example, right now my product detail just has my line number, my quantity, my part number the description, the cell field, and the extended cell field. Uh, maybe I want to add the list price to that. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is come down to that product de detail section, which is right down here, and make some room. Because right now I don't have a lot of room. So I'm going to stretch it out a little bit, and I'm actually going to shrink down the description. Because I know I won't have enough room the way it was situated. Um, so that gave me this little gap here between the description and the cell. And so what I, what I want to do now is I want to go get the list price, and I want to put it in there. And to do that, I'll need to come over here to the Field Explorer again. And earlier when I clicked, it compressed down my data field, so I've got to expand that back out so I can see my sections. And it's kind of important when you're adding, um, adding a field from one of these sections, you want to make sure you match it up with the field or the section that you're going into. So for example, right now I'm doing the Product Detail section. So I want, to get a, I want to get my list price from the product detail. So I expand out product detail. It already tells me the fields that are in there. So for example, line number has a little green check mark number or check mark next to it because it's, uh, it's already in the section. So I said I was looking for list, so I'm going to go down and look for the list price, which is right here. And again, we just click hold down the mouse button and drag it, and we get the little circle with the line. But when we get over the report, it switches back over to an arrow. And then once I get about where I want it, I'm just going to let go. And you can see it, it dropped it right in that gap I had. And now I can, I can kind of move it around, adjust it, use these little green grips on the corners and on the sides to expand out the field if I need to. Now this field's different from that reusable text field that I put in at the top. And what's different about it is this is actually a value. It's actually going to take a value from your worksheet and print it in here. So if I try to edit this field by double-clicking on it, I'm not going to get any options where I can type and put in text. It, it, it won't let me do that because these, the, the value for this is actually going to come from the worksheet itself, not from the report design. Um, but I can still change the size of the text. So if I wanted to make it bold, um, I can do that by checking the bold box up here. I can change the font to one of these other Windows fonts. I can change the size if need be. Um, you can even change the color and put borders around it if you like. Um, but I'm not going to get too fancy with it. I just wanted to basically show you how to get that in there. Um, and that's, that's the basics of Report Designer. Um, the last thing I want to do is once I've, I've made my changes to my report, I would come into the File menu and click Save to save those changes. And we have to remember that when we saved it originally, we put, well, I, I put the word my in front of it, so it was different from the standard report. Um, 
So now if I go back and I want to test it, I have to reapply my report design, and I have to do the one that says my standard quote because right now Worksheet thinks we are using the default standard quote one. So I want to use this one here in the list that says my standard quote. And again, the report takes a few seconds to generate. And now you can see in my report, up here in the top right, it says I can type whatever I want because that's what I typed in my rich text field. And then uh, this bold line here, this is that list price that I inserted. Um, so basically using those few principles, you should be able to edit one of these reports and get it looking um, pretty spiffy.